Hi, I'm Trin Johnson, and welcome to my channel, Dust in My Eye. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that cute little bell to receive notifications of my future videos. When the pandemic began in March, we went into lockdown, and my sister Maggie suggested we do a family art challenge on Facebook to keep our sanity. Being an artistically minded family, we all thought this might be fun. We posted reference photos or prompts five days a week. Over 150 paintings later, and a lot of interest from friends and family, I decided to offer prints of my work on my Etsy shop, Dust In My Eye. From there, I took it one step further, starting my channel and creating videos of my process. Before I start the demonstration, I'm going to give you an overview of some of the pieces I created for my family's art challenge and what mediums I've been working in lately. This is one of my most recent pastel paintings. I took a bunch of photos on a walk near our home and they became some of our reference photos. This was one of our photos from another day. It's from a photo of the flowering cherry tree in my front yard and it's painted with alcohol inks. I snuck this one in on a weekend. It's a watercolor painting from a photo I took at our cottage, a place near and dear to my heart. This was from a photo of an art installation, Thomas Dambo's Trolls, at the Morton Arboretum in Lockport, Illinois. It was Troll Day. My sister Anne took the picture. It's pen and ink. My sister Anne took this one too. California poppies. It's in oil pastels. This photo was from Nest Day. The Mama Robin made a nest out on our deck. It's in colored pencil. This was one of the choices on Lavender Day. My sister Ellen took these pics on a recent visit to a lavender farm. This was also a choice. I went with this one, and it's the one I'm using for this demonstration. This is the watercolor setup I used for the underpainting. These are the pastels I used, mostly Terry Ludwig and Blue Earth, a few Sennelier, new pastels, and I think one Manjo. I like to tape my paper in the corner with the sticky side facing me. I do each corner and tape it down from the outside um, on a, like a hinge kind of taping. I find this works the best for me to be able to put the pastel anywhere on the paper that I want and still get the corners to stay down, especially when I'm using something like UART. This paper is Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte in Sienna. I really love this paper, especially with a watercolor underpainting. I find that it really turns out beautiful. Sometimes I really like just the underpainting, but I do always go ahead and do my pastel work on top of it. I also drew in a box that's approximately 8 inches by 10 inches in the middle just to kind of give myself space to work in. This is a woodless charcoal pencil I'm using to just sketch in roughly, very roughly, where my lavender is and the pretty little purple flowers. Now I'm starting my underpainting. For this painting, I decided to stick with the colors that are actually in the painting for my underpainting, or a rough approximation. Sometimes I do complementary colors. Sometimes I look for the color that's buried underneath the image I'm trying to paint. Um, in this case, maybe it's the dark brown of the wood chips. 
Um, if I'm doing a landscape, sometimes it will be a purplish tone in the sky and a bluish tone in the trees. Um, but this time I did it pretty straightforward. I just love the way watercolors look on this Clairefontaine pastel mat. The colors are so vibrant. Now I'm painting in the flowers, um, but it's really just a rough approximation of where they're going to be because they kind of get buried before they come back out again, but this gave me an idea of where they were going to go. Here I'm starting with a dark, dark green. I like to start with the darkest colors and try and build on that. Now I'm going in with very dark brown. some middle colors over top. This piece doesn't have any really, really dark areas. There's maybe a couple here and there. I get a nice layer of my purple kind of lavender color in and some of the paler greens that are in the lavender stems. I work from loose tight um, but not very tight in the end I try to stay away from very tight uh, I try to work different areas of the painting at different at the, uh, all, all over the painting at the same time not not just stick to one little area and detail it out um, I find that it's more homogenous that way and I don't have something that I done a whole lot of detail on me, just more than I wanted to do, and then the rest of the painting doesn't go with it, or I have to get too detailed with the rest of the painting, and I, I don't really want to do that. I like it looser. I do tend to get to a place where I kind of liked it, and then it went really um, ugly for a while, <laughs> which it tends to do, but it, it comes back. Uh, so if you happen to see the ugly stage and think, oh my god, where is this going? Uh, believe me, it, it really does come back um, to a nice place. So stick it out. Um, that would be great if you'd hang in there till the end. some highlights, a little bit lighter color, work my way up to the, the little lighter tones in the lavender. I went quite a ways before I added in the flowers. Um, I wanted to really get the leaves established and the stems of the lavender established and the wood chips some shadows I didn't want it to look like a, I drew in a bunch of leaves from a like center spot and just like puffball <laughs> I also find it really helps to step back and get a new perspective, maybe leave where I'm painting and come back to it with fresh eyes, which is um, interesting. Today I'm painting in my backyard. I like to do that in this pandemic and uh, it makes me feel like I'm on vacation. And so I'm on my deck and that's my backyard on my mom's easel that she's an oil painter and 
love using her easel. But anyway, when I leave the porch and come back and I get a long view of the painting, I often can tell where it's lacking and what it needs, um, what I need to fix, what I like. I don't always print out the picture that I'm using for reference if I'm using a reference picture. Um, but when I'm working outside, I kind of have to. It's just too hard to work off an electronic device because it, you can't really see it in the sun. Even though I'm not in the direct sunlight, you still really can't see it very well. So. I discovered when I stepped back that eventually discovered that my flowers were a little bit on the big side, um, the big, the purple ones on the bottom. So I kind of came in and toned them down a little bit, made them a little smaller. Um, they're not all quite in the same places that they were in my original uh, watercolor part of the painting. Some of them moved a little bit. Now I'm trying to work out how much detail I want in my lavender to make it look like lavender. The purple flowers are lovely, but I really wanted the lavender to be the focus since today was Lavender Day in the art channel. At some point here, I realized that the flowers in the back that were lavender were a different set of lavender that was behind another one of the spiky kind of um, puffball, for lack of a better term, plants. And I was like, oh, this makes so much more sense now. So I was able to do a better job with that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm there yet in this. I'm going to add some more detail onto my flowers, my little flowers in the front. Um, they're kind of like little daisies almost, like pinky purple daisies. So I, when I work on the flowers, you get my head shot. Um, because I need to get up close to kind of see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get a nice mix of wood chips without drawing all the wood chips in because I just don't want that much detail. I felt like there was a nice, a little bit of a rusty red underneath the plant back there. So I wanted to get that in, but I didn't want it to fight with the pinks. So I kind of got it in and then went over it a little bit with the dark brown, trying to get some of those dark brown areas in just to get some contrast or else the painting would be kind of lackluster. detail on my little daisy-like thing. I don't want them to all look exactly the same either, even though they all were pretty much facing out there, but it wasn't really much of a side view on the reference photo, but I kind of played with that a little bit. and want to work loosely, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to stand back to get a look at your at what you're doing from 
you know, 10, 15 feet away or to leave the room and come back and, and see it with fresh eyes because you get so caught up in the detail in the little bitty areas and uh, it's hard to stay loose. some really little white highlights in there make those pop. Trying to pull some blue in, I think, um, into my lavender. I was having a little trouble at this point with lavender, I had a lot of layers on and I wasn't able to get what I wanted. So I struggled with that for a while. Trying to get the pastel to do what I wanted it to do. And it wasn't behaving. also trying to get there's two little pieces of the lavender that stuck out that I was trying to get without getting too fussy about them I'm trying to get some highlights in there in my grasses my leaves Getting in there again, getting a little bit more detail, but not too much detail. <laughs> I'm trying to get some darks into that lavender so that there's a little bit of contrast. And again, I was running into the paper not wanting to accept any more pastel in that area. I'm trying to get that little contrast to show the little piece at the bottom. spray fix. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and mask most of the painting and just hit that spot where I was having trouble getting any more pastel to stick. 
And if you spray this on and let it dry, it gives you some tooth to work with. So now I've, I've waited. <laughs> it, was, it was longer than that. But now I can get in there and get some more pastel down. Trying to get a nice mix of the pretty stems and the pale purple. Pick out a few stems to get a little more detailed on so it doesn't just look like a blur. It's a good idea to step back and, and look and come back the next day or um, after some time, get a fresh perspective. You could go on playing with it for days and sometimes you just got to say, I'm done <laughs> and call it. just a little bit more. There we go. Make it pop. There's nothing quite like putting a mat around it or taking a photo and eliminating all the flotsam and jetsam that's around the edge of the paper to make it really sing. I like that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my video. I'm new to this whole taping thing. I'm glad you followed through to the end. This is my setup out in my backyard, just to give you an idea of where I was painting from pretty view I had. Please check out my Etsy shop, Dust in My Eye, where I'll have prints of this piece available along with prints of a lot of other pieces from my family's art challenge. Also be sure to check out my monsters and tiny monsters. Thanks for watching. <laughs>